eight. Uh, <laughs> better than my 20. So thank the Lord for that. I want to say I know Bob's watching and listening uh, tonight there in Columbia. And so we're so thankful, honey. We love you. Happy anniversary. We miss you terribly. Uh, you know, I know it's our 25-year anniversary. And some may say, how's he in Columbia and you're in Tennessee? You know, we celebrate our love every single day of the year, uh, every single day of the year. So I'm thankful he's out preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. We need to hear it more and more and more and more. So we're grateful for that. Uh, also want to just mention here, we're going to have uh, David and Martha Borg uh, coming and ministering with us uh, July 6th, so no, the 8th. July 8th and 9th, uh, 8 o'clock Saturday night. Uh, no, sorry. See, I am not good at the announcements. Uh, Saturday, July the 8th at 6 p.m. Sunday at 10.30 a.m. So if you can come out and be with us, we're looking forward to that. Do want to mention this as well. We would normally have service next Tuesday, but being that it is July 4th, uh, where we're celebrating our nation's independence and thank the Lord for that. We're still one nation under God and we're going to celebrate that. We'll have church on Wednesday, July the 5th uh, instead of that. And in light of that, we're going to uh, postpone the ladies Bible study until the following month in August. And we'll pick up back then with the names of God. And man, oh man, what a study we've been having. The names of God are powerful. Knowing who he is through his names is so so powerful and grateful for that tonight also want to mention we have the sheer privilege of having mike Gun gunnery <laughs> rhymes with canary <laughs> woohoo and he can sing so whatever however the lord leads we're going to be blessed tonight and ministered and we're so thankful for that let's stand to our feet Praise God. Let's enter into the presence of God tonight. Father, we thank you that in the name of Jesus, Lord, you are here. Lord, we want you to have your own way in every heart, in every life. Lord, minister to us near and far in the precious, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
let's start right now. So it's not every tongue yet, but it will be. But we can start it right now. Every tongue will confess, but we're going to start right now. Amen. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee oh, will bow right now. And still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. And one day, one day every tongue will confess you are God. And one day every knee will bow down.
daughters in the house tonight hallelujah I'm looking at a few sons and daughters of the king hallelujah there's still some worshipers in 2023 in good old USA some still some worshipers that are willing to rise up and be counted and say I'm a child of the king I'm a daughter of the king I'm a son of the king I don't wear a church name over my head I don't wear my name over my head but I've got blessed hallelujah and highly favored because I'm a child of the king tonight you're a child of the king hallelujah and worshipers arise man oh man oh man if Jesus were here in the flesh he's here make no doubt about it he is here but if he were in the flesh man I don't know about you but I'd probably be lying prostrate prostrate on the ground, prostrate before him, saying, Lord, I want to worship my king. I'm reminded of that little song, say, I don't know. When I get to glory, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what am I going to do? What's it going to be like, Lord? Am I going to run the streets of gold? Man, I, I got I to gotta think to myself, man, I just want to be laying at his feet. I'm just going to be worshiping at his feet. Man, just let them find me worshiping at his feet. Hallelujah. And as Sam mentioned a moment ago, every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But we got the opportunity from the moment that we said yes to him to say, Lord, you are God and there ain't nobody else beside you. You're God all by yourself. Hallelujah. He doesn't need any of us. But man, what a privilege we have of being in relationship with him. Praise God for that tonight. I'm so thankful. So, so thankful tonight. Man, I want to give an hour or two or five or six. <laughs> so, so thankful uh, for this dear family. If uh, Many of you may not know that are watching uh, live or will watch later, but Mike Ganeri 
Mike and Marcy Ganaria, his beautiful wife. Uh, they are, Mike is Sharon uh, Snyder's sister. You all remember her and uh, identify her <laughs> by the back of her head. Uh, we love her dearly. Uh, and you hear her many times closing us out in prayer, telling us that we, we're not, we're leaving the building, but we're not leaving his presence. And he's going with us. And we're so thankful for this powerful family. They, uh, man, she's a pillar in the house of God so so grateful for her so grateful for her and her dear husband we're so thankful for them so grateful to them uh, for for loving us but most of all loving him uh, we're thankful for that tonight Mike I'm not gonna uh, say anymore I'm gonna just give it over to you again his beautiful wife Marcy we're so thankful have your way let him have his way we love you Praise God. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight on a Tuesday night. And uh, I'm believing the Lord's going to do some wonderful things. I brought something for you. And uh, I want it to bless your spirit. You see, the Lord didn't make it hard. He said, if two of you, if, if, just, if I can just get two of you, Together, together in my name. He said, there am I in the midst. So the Lord is here and the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, if God would have demanded something of us that we couldn't get, God would be unjust. But the Lord has made a way for us to receive faith. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the Word of God. And how can they hear except there be a? That's me. Something, something exciting is going to happen here tonight. I, we got the combination. And how can he preach except God sends him? I've been sent with the Word and I'm going to tell you what. There's four kind of grounds it can fall on tonight. And I like the last one, the good ground. Because it brings some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. How many wants to bring forth fruit here tonight? Praise God. Well, we're going to get into the Word. My, my wife always wants people to love me as much as she loves me. And so, when I pastored... She was very concerned about how long I preached. And uh, she told me when they asked us to come and, and minister, she said, you know, that's a midweek service. You're only going to probably have about 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, preacher's wives have a special job. Uh, when I pastored, Morsi had signs she would give me about how long I preached. Sometimes she'd go like this. That meant land the plane, the people want off. <laughs> then she would do this. That was, let them up, Mike. They've had enough. And one night I was preaching, and my wife always sat right on the front, and our son would sit by her. He's about 13 years old. And I hadn't been preaching long. And all of a sudden there was a commotion from my wife, like an urgency. I said, what is going on? I, I know I haven't been preaching that long. Surely she's not concerned already. Wasn't too long she had my son involved. Well, I just ignored him. I looked over and she had put a note. Right below her neck, it said, zip up. I said, zip up? She's gone too far now. I said, I'm just going to call her out right here in church. And I looked right at her. I said, what do you mean, zip up? She said, your pants. Zip up your pants. That's a true story. That really happened. A friend of mine asked me to come preach for him. And I told that story. 
And there was a fella sitting on the back bench, and about halfway through the message, he started going, <laughs> Land the plane! Are you excited about Jesus? Are you excited about this church? I'm excited about what I see up here. God's got something great because there's a dream. We're going to talk about dreamers tonight. I'm going to get this where I can see you. Oh, there you are. I believe God's going to give you a building. But I'm going to talk to you tonight about the fact the dream is not about you. The dream never was about you. It was always about others. Come on, somebody. Turn with me, if you would, to Genesis chapter 45. Genesis chapter 45. We're going to start at verse 4. When you're there, say, I'm there. Well, let me get a little water and then we'll get off. We'll get going. Verse 4, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did what? God did send me before you to what? Preserve. Preserve life. Dreams are not about me. It's always about others. Whew. Did y'all just feel that? That's what I love about preaching. It feels good. <laughs> he sent me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a prosperity in the earth, and save your lives by a great deliverance. Look at the first part of verse 8. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody near Pentecostal, y'all might as well get with me. I'm like that little choo-choo train going up here. I think I can, I think I can. And you know what fires me up? Praise God. Amen, brother. <laughs> then we can land the plane. Now, each of us are here today because of a dream. For God begins every potential miracle in our lives with a dream. A faith picture. It's painted on our heart by the Holy Ghost. Mm. You can see it, but no one else can because a dream, a vision begins and lives on the inside of you. Now in every dream, God has set forth an appointed time. Everybody say appointed time. God has set forth an appointed time when the dream, the vision, the faith picture will come to fulfillment. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3 says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tables, that they may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. You're not just filling space. God's got a place and a time for your dream to come to pass. And when it happens, people are going to recognize the anointing on you. I thought y'all was just coming to a midweek service. I like that. Go ahead. It's for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it, because it surely will come. It will not 
tarry. Then the writer of Hebrews takes the same thought in chapter 10 and he says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, your bold confession of faith in the dream. Which has great reward for you have need of patience or endurance. So that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Then he comes to this. For yet a little while. Yet a little while. And that which is coming will come. And will not tarry. He says because the just... Live by their faith. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The just live by faith in the promise that God placed in their heart. Nobody else can see it. Some can't even understand it. But God, the living God, He put it there. And it's real. You wait. Just shall live by faith. So I say to all you dreamers that are here tonight, wait in faith. God has a set time and it will come. Now God gave Joseph a dream and his whole life was defined by that dream. And what makes Joseph's life so wonderful and, and we like to talk about him so much is because he is a testimony that dreams really do come true. I said he's a testimony. He's living proof that dreams really do come true. But Joseph's life reveals something to us. It reveals that there's a process in which God brings you through to reach the fulfillment of your dream. A process. You see, God gave Joseph a dream and then the dream led him through a process. Three levels of life. First of all, there was the survival level. Then there was the success level. And then, number three, there was the significance level. That's the level God's bringing us to all along. Even Jesus said, first it's the blade. Then it's the ear. Then it's the full-grown corn inside the ear. But that doesn't happen overnight. There's a process. But let me tell you something. God's working towards the harvest all the time. He never stops working. Even when I don't see it, He's working. Even when I don't feel it, He's working. Because God placed the dream in this church. Mm. My goodness. That's good preaching. Now... The survival level is this. It's where you see the dream with your eyes closed. Because that's the only way you can see it. When you look around you, there is nothing. No evidence that the dream is coming true. It's awful. It's discouraging. It's depressing. You're in a pit, then a slave, then in prison. During the survival level, your foremost responsibility is simply to keep the dream alive. God, you gave me this dream. I don't see it. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. In fact, it's not getting closer. It seems to be getting further away. But God, I'm just going to bear down. And I'm going to keep that dream alive. Though I can't see it, I'm going to shut my eyes. Woo! How many know what I'm talking about? And you keep it alive. 
smiles in your eyes because you know God gave you the dream. The second level of life is success level. And if you stay the course, if you don't grow weary in well-doing, you're going to reap because dreams really do come true. Divine dreams come true. If you stay the course, if you lock into your dream and continue to be led by the Lord, you will arrive at the success level. Listen to me. At this point, you know the dream is coming to pass because you can actually see it with your eyes open. Everything God said, there it is. Just like I dreamed it. Now, most people think there are only two levels of life, winners and losers, success and failure, but that's just not true. There is a third level, first survival, then success, then there's significance. Significance is when you see the dream, not with your eyes closed and not with your eyes open, but you see the dream through God's eyes. And it's then you realize, you know what? The dream never was about me. The dream never was about me. It was always about others. Let me tell you something. God will exalt a humble person to the sky. Why? Because the end of the dream is always to bless others. To save lives. To sustain life. It's when you see the dream through God's eyes. And you profoundly understand. The dream was always about my brothers. And it's a significant level. That God has always been bringing you to. The place where because of the fulfillment of your dream. You make a significant difference in the lives of others. People whose lives were hopeless. Enslaved by sin. Bruised. Broken. Starving. In a spiritual famine. Now, because your dream come to pass, they're blessed. They're healed. They're delivered. They're in the best land. Because you stayed the course. Because you didn't quit. If anybody had a right to quit, Joseph had a right to quit. My brothers didn't love me. My daddy didn't care much for me. I'm going to get my jollies where I can get them. I'm going to live for myself. But you know what he said? I cannot do this evil thing and sin against God. Because God put a dream in my heart. I'm not going to let the devil move me from my dream. And listen to me. If there's a place for you to quit, the devil's going to find it. If there's a place where you'll say, you know what? I've had enough. You know why a lot of preachers quit? They pour their lives and their hearts and their souls into people. Because the dream's not about them. It's about others. And then they can walk away with no feelings. It's so discouraging. But you know what? Those that stay the course. Woo! Those that keep on keeping on. Those that don't let anything or anybody turn them from the way. They know in God, God is going to bring it to pass. Dreams not about me.
Now that's significance. And we are called to a life of significance, to make a difference, to change the lives of people around us with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is God who is leading you through the survival level, through the success level, to get you to the significant level so that you can see the dream through God's eyes. And what is that dream? God so loved the world. God so loved the world. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish. That's why this church is here. That's the purpose. Preach the gospel to the poor. Heal the brokenhearted. Preach deliverance to the captive. The recovering of sight to the blind. Set at liberty them that are bruised. I probably really don't need this mic anymore. <laughs> and I like this part. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. you know what that is? That is jubilee. You know what God told the children of Israel? They said, he said, every 50th year when atonement comes around to you it's going to be the year of jubilee yes. on the seventh month in the tenth day of the month when that silver trumpet blows it will announce jubilee and you know what that said all prisoners go free all debts are canceled. All lost inheritance are restored. That sounds like coming to Jesus. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach and tell you the year of Jubilee is not a day. It's a person. It's me. Come to me. goodness that that's enough right there to quit on but I'm not just because my wife said I had to I'm not she told me that you know what I said who does she think she is the Lord will tell me when to quit I preach where I said the last one that leaves but he cut the lights off you know why it's like fire shut up in my bones it's like fire Shut up in my bones. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Wow. What a calling to significance. So, Joseph dreams a dream and... The dream was this. Him and his brothers were in the field and they were gathering sheaves and his sheave rose up and all of his older brothers' sheaves bowed down to his sheave. Now instead of seeing the anointing of God on Joseph's life, what did they do? They got jealous. And envious. And you know what they said? Will we serve you? Will we bow down to you? And the Bible says they hated him for his dreams. And you know what people will do when they hate you for your dream? They'll try to stop it. But if God's placed a dream in your heart and in your life, there's nobody or nothing can stop it. I rebuke.
rebuke you, Satan. I resist you. You got to go. And so what do they say? Here comes that dreamer. Let's stop the dream. You know, Joseph is a perfect type of Jesus Christ. You know, they sold jo Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. And they hated him. Sold him into slavery. Slavery in Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife lied on him. And from slavery, he goes to prison. Don't you think he prayed? God, remember me. Don't forget me, Lord. But God was working because when Joseph came out of prison, there wasn't going to be a prideful bone left in his body. God could exalt him to the high heavens. Everywhere he went, God's hand was on his life because his heart was perfect towards God. And you know what God said? My eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth to show myself strong to those whose hearts are perfect before me. The butler... The baker, Joseph, interprets their dreams. The butler's restored. But before he leaves, you know what Joseph said? Don't forget me. When you, when you get where you're going, tell them about me. And the Bible says two more years. He was left in prison. His hands they put in stocks and chains. Until the word of the Lord came. It tried him. It tested his faith. How many here tonight have dreams that go back 11 years or further? You know when God put the dream in your heart. You know when God did it and you took it by faith and you keep it with your eyes closed because you don't see it with your eyes open. But after 11 years, he remembers Joseph. And Pharaoh has a dream. Seven fat cows, seven skinny cows, seven lean corn, seven fat corn. And Pharaoh says, who can interpret this dream? I know somebody with whom is the Spirit of God who's come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And the butler says, you know, when I was in prison, there was a man named Joseph. And he, he, he said, in him is the Spirit of God. And he told me my dream. Pharaoh says, get him. The Bible says Joseph had to shave and clean himself up to come. He said, Pharaoh, let me tell you what this is. Because dreams belong to God. And I'm going to give you the interpretation because God is going to give it to me. The seven fat cows are seven years of plenty. I can't get to my dream until we get past this because my brothers are in my dream. And my brothers bowed to me in my dream. 
because the dream never really was about me. It was about bringing a family into Egypt to become a nation that the nation could bring forth a virgin. And the virgin could bring forth a son that would be the savior of the whole world. You see, the dream's not about me. It's always been about others. Oh, God. He can shake this town. There's nothing my God can't do. He can move mountains. There's nothing he can't do. But he's got to find somebody to speak to it. Hey, bones can live if God can find a man to speak to them. Can these bones live? Thou knowest. Well, why don't you speak to them and see what I can do? I'm getting close to the end, sweetie. She said I'm in trouble. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. If I was Brother Swagger, somebody would be on the organ by now. <laughs> you know, I hear Brother Swagger say all the time, I promise you, I won't keep you past 12 unless I do. Of course, I don't claim to be Brother Swagger. So. Now, where was I? Uh, so anyway <laughs> to get to the dream I got to get through the seven plentiful years because it's going to be in famine that my brothers are going to come because you see the dream never was about me it was always about the salvation of others. And the Pharaoh says, who in the whole empire could I better trust than to do this job than a man that has the Spirit of God inside of him? So he appoints Joseph to be prime minister over all of Egypt. In 24 hours, he comes from prison to the top man. Look what the Lord has done. Hey, you may see a shepherd boy, but God sees a king. Yes! Glory! Whoa! He tells when this one to go and this one to come. He's running the place. Seven years of plenty. And by the wisdom that God placed in him, he stocks up enough food, grain, to feed the whole known world. But you see, everybody thinks that when he got on the throne, that was the end of his dream. No, that wasn't his dream at all. His dream were that his brothers were going to come and bow to him. It took two more years of famine. And just like his dream, here comes his brothers to buy corn. And just like his dream, you know what they did? They bowed down before him. Just like his dream. Dreams do come true. But listen to me. It's always about the salvation and the prosperity of others. You see, Joseph being a type of Christ, he not only saved the Hebrew nation, but he saved the Gentile nation. Yeah. 
It's okay to get happy about Jesus. It's okay to jump up and shout. That fella at the, at, laying at the door of the temple. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have. Give I unto thee. You know, most preachers just say, silver and gold, I got plenty, but what you need, I ain't got any. <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there. But when he reached down, Sister Sharon, and he took him by the hand immediately, because he said, in the name of Jesus! Immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength and he went leaping and praising and jumping into the house of God. When Jacob died, the preacher said in conclusion, Little boy said, my daddy said, Daddy, what's that mean? He said, don't mean nothing, son. Don't mean nothing. But I am, I'm really, I'm ending. I didn't bring you the whole load tonight, just some of it. When Jacob died, his brother said, now he's going to get revenge. Now he's going to get even. Now we're going to pay. And the Bible said they come into Joseph and they did obeisance. They bowed in his presence. His dream. Again. And you know what he said? You meant it to me for evil. You meant it to me. For, you wanted to stop my dream. Not even realizing my dream was going to bless you. Not just me. You meant it to me for evil. But God. But God. Meant it to me for good. The last thought. The greatest man that ever lived on the face of the earth. By all means was the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself, he emptied himself out. And he was made in the likeness of you and me. You see, he had to become like me so I could become like him. Yeah. He had to become like me without my sin. He did what no other man did. Lived a perfect life. He never sinned. And he came to fulfill the purpose to lay down his life. But in the garden, as he sweat great drops of blood, he cried out, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will. You know what he was saying? The dream is not about me. The dream is not about me, Father. The dream is about the salvation of the world. And he left there. You could come to the piano. And he left there. If you'd have come probably 15 minutes ago. <laughs> and he left there and he went to the cross. There he shed the blood. There he paid the price. There he brought salvation to mankind. The dream is not about me. The dream is always about it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The dream is not about me. The dream is not about me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the reality is the dream is, is, is it's Jesus. 
You know, the acronym J-O-Y for joy, it's Jesus, others, and you. Jesus, others, and you. The dream is not about me. The dream is not about you. It's about everybody else. It's about your neighbor. And it's about what he put in your heart. What he put in there, he's going to bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Ain't no devil can stop it. Ain't no good church folks can stop it. My God, when he says it, he's going to do it. Hallelujah. 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 It may take a minute just as it did with Joseph but he's got a plan hallelujah God's got a plan for the dreamers hallelujah I'm looking at some dreamers tonight I'm looking at some dreamers and we ain't giving up on the dream that he's put into our hearts he's going to bring it to pass and we're going to do it with joy hallelujah great joy Jesus others you hallelujah he's going to bless you don't you worry about it but your eyes our eyes are on Jesus and others it's not about me hallelujah let's stand to your feet that's some good news tonight that's some good news the dream is not about me all the pressure is off hallelujah let God do what he wants to do let him do it all the way till he comes hallelujah 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 he can our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the King, oh Jesus, shine your light in, let the whole world see, we're singing for the glory of the risen King, so Savior, Savior, He can move the mountains, our God is a mighty to save, He is a mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. So Jesus conquered the grave. So we pray, move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we.
impossible from the impossible. It's impossible, but we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. Oh, God, we believe. They say, they say it's impossible, but you said it's a miracle. Oh, God, we believe. Oh, God, we believe for it. Oh, God, we believe. God, we believe. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, my Lord. The palace probably looked a good distance away when he was in the prison house, but God had a palace in store. God had a palace in store, but it was all about the brothers. It was not about how big the palace was. It was not about how big Joseph was. It was all about his brothers coming to bow before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's going to bring in the broken. He's going to bring in the bound. He's going to bring in the oppressed. He's going to bring in the captive, some of which were just like you and I. I don't know where he found you, but you know, and I know exactly where he found me. <laughs> and I know that I know that I know that that pit I could never have gotten myself out of. But look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Look what the Lord has done. And there's some others that he wants to do the same thing for. And he ain't finished yet. He's really just getting started. Hallelujah. He is just getting started. The dream is not about me. My Lord, I'm going to bed dreaming, thinking about that. Hallelujah. The dream is not about me. It's all about him. It is all about him. And what he puts in your hearts, you can't help but let him give it to others. You can't help it. Joy. Jesus others you. What is he going to do? My Lord, what is he going to do? Boy, I cannot tell it all. My eyes are closed. <laughs> but I see it. <laughs> but I see it. Hallelujah. By faith. And those eyes are going to be open. Other folk are going to see it. But I mean, I want them to see him. That's what the goal is. We want them to see him. Praise God. And every mountain, every mountain is movable in the presence of God. By the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're going to see it with our eyes. My Lord, we're going to see it through his eyes. Sorry, I didn't mean to call them up and start preaching your message all over again. But man, it's in there. It's like shrapnel in my heart now and it ain't coming out. Hallelujah. I say shrapnel, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's found some good soil. Good soil. And we're believing for fruit 100 fold in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I, 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 the Lord just laid it upon our hearts tonight. We want to take up an offering for Pastor Mike. He obviously did not say, hey, you got to pay me before I go or before I come. But when the Lord puts it on our hearts to do it, that's what we want to do. And uh, if Katim, I could get you to come if you don't mind. I got the baskets up here brother and I know if you didn't bring your checkbook we can put that scanner code thing whatever they like to call it the QR code uh, up there and everything that you give and anybody watching online now or later if you can put in the notes give that to Pastor Mike the dream is not about me <laughs> the dream is not about me hallelujah and we'll be sure that he gets it and God will get all the glory for it He's going to get all the glory. The dream is not about me. 
Hallelujah. It's all about him. Father, we thank you tonight that in Jesus' name, Lord, you are God and you're God all by yourself. Lord, I thank you for this word. God, I pray it finds good soil to land in a hundredfold on every heart in the name of Jesus, Lord. It's not about us. It's all about you. Do it as unto others, Lord, through us in Jesus' name. Bless them so in the name of Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll sing it one more time. That's our first closing. eyes that significance level hallelujah seeing it through god's eyes my lord let us see your neighbor through his eyes let them see them at, see them at the store in our vehicles the fellow with road rage next to us let them see jesus let them see jesus in a very real way thank you so so much pastor mike first time but won't be the last uh, Lord willing, thank you so, so much, Sister Marcy. Thank you for lending them to us. Uh, <laughs> zip up. Uh, I'll remember that. Uh, well, I don't want to close on that, though. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Sharon, if you could close us out. I'll try after that. Lord, we thank you tonight that we can see it lord we're seeing the miracle we're seeing the dream god and it's not about us it's about others god it's always about the message of the good news god oh god and we're going to leave this place but we're not going to leave your presence we thank you for going with us every step of the way and we give you the glory and the praise and the church said amen God. Love on one another. Come hug the man of God tonight. Love you so, so much.